Welcome to episode 407 of Control Talk Now, where we discuss all things HVAC and smart building controls, including sales and marketing. My name is Eric Stromquist, and this week we're going to take a different look at leadership. Could you lead an organization of strong personalities if you could not fire them or give them raises? And on top of that, imagine that the people that hired you gave you very aggressive goals to accomplish. Think about that. How good would you have to be at leadership to be able to lead without being able to use the two tools most managers use to get stuff done, money and fear? I have a younger cousin who was on the fast track at one of the Fortune 100 companies. He was brilliant and was being groomed for the executive suite. Every project he was given, he and his team excelled at. They nailed it. The company he was with was very, very results-driven. If you did not produce the results, that was it. Your journey to the top was derailed. And although you still had a job, your career with that company had reached its peak. So here's how it worked. If you were on the fast track at at this company, here was your final test. My cousin was put in charge of a billion-dollar project with very aggressive and some would say unrealistic goals and deadlines. He was assigned a team that he did not get to pick, and he could not hire anyone or fire anyone. He could not offer raises or any type of monetary incentive, and he was 100% responsible for the project being successful. So imagine that. How would you have to show up as a leader to get that job done? Imagine how much he learned about himself and people in the process. I can tell you from talking with him, it was the most challenging and rewarding thing he has ever done. After that experience, he can lead any group of people and get anything done. I wish I could tell you he was my guest this week so we could find out the leadership skills he learned. I don't have him, but I do have a guest who is creating great results under exactly the same constraints that is actually in our industry. She has so much knowledge to share about this type of leadership, and she'll be with us in a bit. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss her. First, I want to follow up on something I talked about on the last two shows, communication. Great leaders are great communicators. And as we discussed, 93% of the communication process is nonverbal, meaning the words we speak only constitute 7% of the communication process, and it's the last 7%. The previous two shows offer two nonverbal communication tips that can really ramp up your effectiveness in communication. It was really not the ideal setup for showing the technique I was trying to explain. So several of you reached out with questions. So I thought I would briefly go through the technique again. Here are the key principles. One, the majority of what influences is out of our awareness Things we do not perceive consciously have a huge impact on us, and this includes nonverbal communication. Second, timing is everything, meaning when you ask might be more important than what you ask. Third, we trust and are open to ideas from people we like, and we tend to like people that are like us. And this includes nonverbal things like our posture, the rate at which we speak, how we breathe, and the gestures we use. Notice when people like each other and they're in rapport, they tend to adopt the same postures and gestures. This is a naturally occurring phenomenon among human beings. And by using this and by adopting the same postures and using some of the same gestures and speaking at the same rate, volume and speed, breathing at different and breathing at the same rate, you can create meaningful connections, which make it much quicker for leaders and salespeople and make it quicker to establish rapport. And leaders and salespeople will tell you nothing gets done until the connection is made. This process is called mirroring. It's a very powerful and a little bit of it goes a long way. So you only need to mirror people for short periods of time to create a connection. Or some, or more importantly, you can use it as a timing mechanism through a process called pacing and leading. And here's how that works. Let's say you need to ask your boss for a raise or a client for an order. Like most of these types of communications, you start off with small talk. But here's where you 
can do it differently. Well, having the small talk, you can mirror something uh, that they're doing. And it might be their, how they're holding their hand or their head. And let's just say, for example, they have their legs crossed. So you could cross your legs. And this is the mirroring part of the process. So things seem to be going well. So you can test to see if the nonverbal rapport has been established at a nonverbal level. And to do this, you just simply uncross your legs. If they uncross their legs too, you now know that a deep level of rapport at a nonverbal level has been established. And now you can ask for that raise or order and have a higher probability of getting a favorable result. If they don't cross their legs, uncross their legs, then you know rapport hasn't been established and the time is not right to move forward. In that case, either cross your legs again or mirror something else they're doing and repeat the process until they follow your nonverbal lead. This is a very, very powerful timing mechanism. And as leaders have told us, timing is everything. Here's another great use of the pacing and leading technique. (laughs) Have you ever had a conversation go off the rails? And the more you say, the worse things get. Whenever this happens to me, I've learned to shut up and listen. But what I do is I start mirroring. A lot of the times when they're upset, they'll have their arms crossed and they're not ready to, and they're lets me know they're not ready to hear what I have to say. So I cross my arms and listen. And after a bit, I will test by uncrossing my arms and see if they follow. Now I know if they do follow that they're open to hear me, but if they don't follow, I cross my arms again and will not try to make my point until I can lead them at a nonverbal level by uncrossing my arms and they follow. This is very useful and very powerful. So give it a try. Hey, I really appreciate all the positive feedback about the nonverbal hacks I've been sharing. And and I'm thinking about offering a nonverbal communications training class. So if you're interested, let me know. Send me an email at controltalknow at gmail.com. Controltalknow at gmail.com. And I'll put your name on a list. And if I do this uh, course, uh, I'll let you know. I keep these classes very small. So it'll be first come, first serve. So if you're interested, be sure to drop me a line now. And also, I'm dropping another episode of Legacy Voice, the new podcast we created about passing knowledge to the next generation. This episode is a remix of an interview I did with John Subwood. John was the CTO of Tritium for many, many years, and John shares about the early days at Tritium and all the lessons he learned along the way. It's great stuff. So look for that to drop on Tuesday. Okay, before we get to our guest, a word from our sponsor this week, Controls Group North America. The world of distribution is undergoing an incredible transformation. And if you want to be at the forefront of the change, then you need to join a community that is working towards redefining supply chains. CGNA is that community. By bringing together the best distributors with innovative manufacturers, we are changing the game by finding ways to solve problems, cut costs, and increase market share for our members. As a member of CGNA, you'll have access to exclusive resources, expertise, and knowledge, including access to intermember inventory. As a manufacturer, you have the opportunity to reach over 208 locations with the support of highly trained and motivated CGNA members. Together, we're redefining distribution and creating real value for our customers. So why not be part of something bigger than yourself? Join CGNA and let's ride the waves of change together. Welcome to a world where synergy reigns supreme. Thanks to CGNA for supporting the show. And if you'd like to be a sponsor and be heard by the global tro- tro- co- be heard by the global control trends community, click on the link in the show notes and find out how to be a sponsor of Control Talk Now. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Sarah Monteleone, the president of CGNA. <laughs> all right. We're here with one of my favorite people of all time. I'm so excited. Please welcome the first time to Control Talk Now, Sarah Monteleone. Thanks, Sarah. <laughs> we have fun, don't we, Sarah? How long we have do. I known you? Oh, my God. 25 years. So, Thank you for being you and doing this for our industry, and I really appreciate you having me on today. I'm so glad to do it, Sarah. You are, again, one of my favorite people. I think you have one of the best skill sets of 
anybody I know, not just in this industry, but pretty much every industry when it comes to building relationships, when it comes to leading people, when it comes to making an impression in a world where it's just difficult to make impressions, you do it. I'll never forget the first time I met you. It was at a controls group North America meeting. And I didn't know you, but you knew me. And you introduced yourself, and we became fast friends on the spot. And you might not know it, but that is a skill. Thank you. No, it's been always important for me to have a relationship with really anybody, right? From business to friends to obviously family. And I look at my business partners as family, and that's always been important to me. That's fantastic. Walk us through your journey. Where do you start and where are you now? Yeah, really, my focus on distribution started right out of college. I did an internship with a fairly large industrial distributor, actually in HR. And upon graduation, they didn't have a position in HR, but thought I would be a great candidate for their sales training program. And I remember calling my dad and saying, hey, you know what? I got this sales opportunity. I don't think it's for me. And he's, do you have any other jobs? And I said, no. And he's, it's for you. So (laughs) I spent six years with that company and it really started my journey in wholesale distribution. After that, my husband got his doctorate in Indiana. And I joined Functional Devices, who, as we both know, the world-famous Rib Relays. I was second salesperson hired, left that company after 11 years. And when I left, I was running the sales team and handling their national accounts. And what a great job. I really enjoyed working there, very close to that team today. And I'm really proud of what I accomplished while I was there. Well, you should be, Sarah. And that's when I met you. When I met you, you were with Functional Devices. And it's a great company, but I don't think anybody at Functional Devices or anywhere else would argue the fact that, boy, you really left an impact with that company, a very positive impact. And is it true you invented the rib relay or are you just keeping (laughs) that on the down low? Yes, as well as other people stake that claim. But no, that is all the Rittman family. And I was hired by Ken, who really took it from an engineering firm to a sales organization, a great mentor. And then what happened next? Where'd you go next? I got a great opportunity with Connect Air, a wonderful opportunity to be vice president, but more importantly, to work under private equity, which I had never done before. Connect Air sells low voltage wire and cable. So same industry, same distributors, same contractors, just a different product line, Eric. I was really part of something special there. I learned a ton and was part of meeting private equity goals, which were new, right? Tough crowd, yeah, um, tough but crowd ultimately sure. as assisted them in selling the company, right? And what a great opportunity for me just to understand that sector of business. Just a, a huge knowledge for me. Yeah. And then you went from, like you said, running a sales team to really, like I said, dealing with private equity. You and I would say that relationships make the world go around and private equity would say quarterly earnings make the world exactly. go around. Exactly. <laughs> a lot so you, of EBITDA. Exactly. Yeah. So you had, so you learn how to speak, speak finance there and how to just deal exactly. with that crowd. Like you said, rough crowd. So good job with that. Yeah, no, they were wonderful. A great investment firm out of New York. Really was happy to get the opportunity for them. And then COVID hit. Wow, changed our lives. And I was recruited by Honeywell to help their building technology group launch a new cloud-based solution. And at the time, it was really just trying to move a little bit away from a leadership role. And I always thought of myself as my biggest strength is my sales skills. So I was excited about just being responsible for myself. Being able to launch something was never a very huge technology, technical salesperson, right? Sadly, I learned from repeating the same thing over and over again. But I understood. I listened. I always knew what I needed to know about the products that I sold. But this was an opportunity to really make it about me. And I loved it. Honeywell's a big brand. There's a lot of positives for working for a Fortune 100 company. And really, from what I understand, most of my projects that I was in pilot stage with have gone out through full rollout. So I'm really pleased that I was able to do something great for Honeywell. Very cool. All right. And then Honeywell, 
two. You, you, you keep getting the challenges bigger, right? For years, Eric, I said I wasn't a job hopper. And then now that I was prepping for this conversation is, wait a minute, for years I had worked for two companies. But really, after Honeywell, CGNA came calling, right? Not just once, twice, a couple of times. And I took the leap in June of 2022. For people who don't know, what is CGNA? Yep. So CGNA is Controls Group North America. It's a member-owned HVAC building automation distribution network. It's made up of distributor, wholesale stocking distributors, and manufacturer vendors that really sell and play in the space of HVAC, refrigeration, controls. We've got some combustion burner boiler folks. We've got some industrial distributors and some fairly large equipment wholesalers. Yeah, and the one thing I'll say, Sarah, about the GNA is they were smart to get you. And so. Oh, uh, thank you. You bet. I got to ask, okay, because I can see. You start it functional, good group of people. You know who you're working for. There's a direction people are going, right? Then you go to Connect Air. You know what that game is, right? You got to get the salespeople selling. You're still dealing with the same group of customers. You're in sales. You're able to be proactive. Something's not working. You get to change it. You go to work for Honeywell. They give you, okay, this is what we want you to do, Sarah. Very clear. You can chart your own destiny. And now... You're running a group, and I love all these folks, but I'm going to tell you what. You talk about a group of alphas who all have opinions. It's like herding cats. Sarah, how in the world do you lead this group? What's the secret sauce here? My role at CGNA is really not to transform or convert our members into a people with a single thought, idea, direction, or feeling. What makes this group so special and powerful is I'm working with those different personalities, right? And people with different strengths and knowledge. It's the collective differences and collaboration that really provides the results and the directions of CGNA, right? It's not one person. So I love the fact that I'm working with a lot of personalities. My role is really listening guiding, obtaining information, sometimes refereeing this crowd, right? Oh, yeah. But ultimately just pulling their words together and putting a plan together. Sir, you make it sound so easy. And I've been at those meetings. And let me tell you something. It is a <laughs> Donnybrook. And for our younger listeners, a brawl most of the time. And getting everybody on the same page, there's an art to that. But so I want to, I want to dive a little bit deeper into that because I think this is going to be really useful for our control trends community. Cause all of us, whether or not Sarah, we're working with a team of technicians or running a company leadership, you have to a establish relationships and B get consensus. Let's talk a little bit about the Sarah magic. First of all, just developing great relationships. Let's just start with your customers. If you were going to advise some of the younger people, what are three or four things you need to do to develop great relationships with your customer? Really, my sales career has always been about relationship selling. For me, it's all about the trust and the human connection with my customers. And I think if you can master that, Eric, and your customer has a need for the product that you sell, the business will follow. And I'm a great example to that. I've shared earlier that I have had the privilege to work with, for some amazing companies. And fortunately, my friends and customers have followed. No promises that the business is there, but they'll at least give me a chance and allow me to have a conversation. And really to simply break it down, for me, get to know your customers, right, Eric? It's just find those similarities and have fun together. And you're, you and I are a great example of that. And you prefaced it earlier, right? It's so much more fun to know about the people you're working with and vice versa. Also, do your job, do what you promise. That is so critical that the follow-up, the follow-through, be trustworthy and respectful. I think that ought to be pushed to number one, but it's still business ethics are even more critical today than they ever have been. And uh, yeah, I couldn't agree more, sir. I want to hop in here a minute because yeah. again, I always felt like with you, you cared more about me. You put me and our relationship above the business. It wasn't that you wouldn't ask me for business, but I never felt like you were pushing me. And I also felt like you were really respectful 
of my time, meaning that you knew enough about me that if a product wasn't going to work, my guess is somebody, one of your employees might say, go get Eric to buy this product. And you probably said, that's not going to work for him. I'm not going to do that. So I think I always felt like you were really respected me as a person. So when you did come to me with something, I was willing to listen, right? Because I knew you had yeah. the integrity, but more important, because there are a lot of people that have integrity, but they'll still just knock on your door and, and, and show up and try to get you to do stuff. They don't understand what's going to work and not. I always felt like you were a partner, not a sales rep. My obligation to the companies that I've worked for is to sell the product and promote the brand. But there are friends and customers where the product's just not needed. But what's important to, I think, our audience, Eric, especially the younger generation, is you may not buy the product that I'm selling. But man, that Eric Stromquist knows a bunch of people that do. Okay. So you take that relationship to different levels, right? And so you got to think about it that way as well, too, is it's all about a network. Network is the key word here. Network of relationships, right? It, It helps you expand your buying platform. There's been some cases where your company doesn't need the product I'm selling, but I can always remember you saying, but I know someone that does buy your product. And let me make that introduction. Golden to any successful salesperson. We could do a hundred podcasts on what you could teach people about developing relationships with customers. Everybody you've been around, Sarah, it seems like your fellow employees really liked you as well. What's the key to having a great relationship with fellow employees? Listening. I touched upon it earlier in regards to customers, right? As salespeople and sales leaders, have a trouble doing that, right? We struggle with listening because we're talkers, right? That's our job. But with employees, one thing that I've learned is allow them their thoughts, allow them to fail, allow them to make mistakes, be there when they do, right? Make it a training and educational moment and support them and treat your employees like you do your customers because ultimately they are. And you want those relationships because what I've found is those relationships, those employees work harder for you. They're loyal. Uh, and it just makes for a better employee kind of manager relationship. Also, I've never been one to work off of titles. It doesn't matter to me. I've The companies that I've worked for minus Honeywell have been small organizations. You do whatever you need to do for the company your employees and the customer. And so don't get hung up on who you are and what your title is. Make sure everybody understands you're available and you wouldn't ask anybody to do something that you wouldn't do yourself. Got it. Okay. So let's do this because we have that and it's easy to lead people that way. But now walk us through how you would handle or how you have handled maybe an employee that's slacking off, not giving you a hundred percent. How do you have that conversation? Ooh, there is a lot of mental discussion with myself before that, right? I get all of the emotion out of the way for the most part and really just stick with the facts, Eric, right? Yeah. It's pretty clear cut today. Everybody's got job responsibilities. Everybody knows what their role is, right? So remove the emotion, be respectful, stick with the facts, and just talk about what the issue is. And I've always been a proponent to second chances, third chances, be part of the solution. Uh, I know that certain organizations have protocols in regard regarding performance plans and sort of action items when maybe an employee is struggling with the job, but also you need to understand why their performance isn't up to par. It may be an understanding. It might not be a situation where the employee is just not doing the job. There may be an issue to that employee doing that job, and it may be home life situation. It may be an understanding of the job responsibilities. So figure it out, be respectful, have an honest conversation, and be part of the solution. Love it. And it gets back to an overarching theme that you really put the relationships top front and center, right? Because if you're in a great relationship with somebody and it's not working, you're able to have honest conversations. But I have seen you with your bosses. It's clear your bosses not only can respect you, but they trust you. So for people out there that are working for somebody else, how do you become a great employee and get their attention and move forward? 
You know what? D- listen, do your job, be part of the solution, make them feel respected. I've always been crazy loyal to the people that I work for. Sadly, in a lot of companies and years, I've put the company first. I don't recommend that, but I have a very supportive husband and family that has allowed me to do that. I've also made sure my family is part of my career, right? A lot of my customers, which are now my friends, know my family. Golf with my husband, I don't know if I recommend that. (laughs) Lost a little bit of that connection. But I think in regards to the people I've worked for in the past is be respectful. And I also love the fact that all of the managers that I've worked for have allowed me to be front and center too, which I really appreciate. They are the leaders, right? They are my Mm -hmm. boss, but they make me feel like I'm relevant. And to be honest with you, when I feel that way, I work 10 times harder for that organization and you'll never meet a more loyal employee. Absolutely. Okay. So for our younger people out there, when their employer or their boss gives them some criticism that maybe they feel is not justified or it casts them off guard. What's the proper way to respond when a superior says, hey, Sarah, this just isn't getting done? Good question. So get the emotion out of the way, right? Just sit still, listen to what your employer has to say, digest it, okay? Think about count from five to one before you respond with anything and understand that your manager is ultimately responsible for that business. Okay. That's so important to understand the roles between leadership and employees and your manager employee relationship is they are responsible. So I've always felt that they have earned their due to be able to Uh, have that conversation with you. It's their job. But also, after you've dissected and listened, ask questions that are not emotion-based. And that's okay. It's not, you're not challenging, you're discussing. And that's a big difference between those words, right? Because nobody wants to be attacked as an employee or as an employer. So give me a, give me a, an example of a, a non-emotional question in a situation. So let's just say, Sarah, your sales are off. You must not be doing a great job. So my, my if are, as an employer or employee? Or well, as an employee. Prefer- Somebody's criticizing okay. you. Uh, your okay. boss is um, giving you a hard time. I probably would start by just reviewing what I know is my job responsibilities. Yeah. And then, and because that's really important, most organizations should clearly define what your responsibilities are. So take that instance, review, hey, this is what I thought the expectation of the job was. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm doing. And then make it a conversation, but allow that back and forth, right? You're allowed as an employee in that situation to be able to respond and defend, but not again, challenge, challenge is not in that instance is a negative term. So you don't want to say you're wrong. I'm right. You can stay away from that. Absolutely. And they'll respect it and make it easy to have that discussion because you want that feedback. Ultimately, that manager, if they know they can come to you and talk about your need to be able to do something different or improve your job, man, that employer will give you opportunities yeah. and have more conversations with you knowing that the conversation is can be positive. Nice. Okay, so we got a lot of manufacturers that watch the show. We got a lot of distributors that watch the show. I'm assuming that CGNA is still open for taking new members in. For a manufacturer out there who's not involved in CGNA, why would they want to join? You know what? First of all, we're celebrating 40 years this year. Congratulations to us. That is crazy, right? Yeah. It's a major milestone, 40 years. The foundation of CGNA really is still intact. It's a distribution, member-owned distribution network with that manufacturer piece. And what's so great, and again, I just joined in June, but I've been a a vendor member for my entire Mm -hmm. career with Functional and Connect Air, who are still part of this organization and actually still selling more product. That's the greatest part. But I talked to a vendor recently and they said, Sarah, we use CGNA to help us launch and sell our product. 
And fast forward 20 years, we are successful because of the member distributors and the services the organization provides. Okay, that is crazy if you think about that. So for vendors, even mature business vendors, product that's been out for 30 years, Eric, this more than anybody is technology changes. Okay, the industry changes. COVID changed things, right? Everything was going e-commerce for for years. Guess what? Through COVID, this organization of stocking wholesaler survived and increased their business because they had inventory. And so these vendors, you want to partner with distributors that obviously buy your product, stock it, but also get it specified support it technically, talk about it. There's absolutely a need for e-commerce, but manufacturers today have forgotten the what a stocking wholesaler truly does from launching that product and supporting it. And so for any vendors out there that are looking for an avenue to really develop relationships. And that's truly what CGNA is. We're a little bit of a buying group. We're a little marketing group. We're a lot of technology. But really, Controls Group North America is a relationship platform. All right, Sarah, I'm going to sum this up for you, okay? You're doing a great yeah. job, but I can sum it up. Okay, so back in the day, if you wanted to get in Studio 54, for example, which is a famous <laughs> discotheque. Remember, you I'm had, younger you, than you. Yeah, You, you had to pay the doorman to get in. If I'm a man, of, if I'm talking to a matter of fact, say, look, it is the ultimate party where you get to come hang out with people, the top tier distributors on the planet that buy more product than anybody else. And for joining the group, you get to come hang out with them at least once a year. You get to come party with them. When I say party, it's like there's a product show. The vendors get yeah. seen. Sarah takes the whip out and goes, all right, these people are supporting us. You better start buying their products. If not, you're going to have to answer to mommy here. It's going to be bad news. All right, Sarah, how do people get hold of, how do people get hold of you? They can email me at smontelion at cgnacontrols.com. Obviously, you can get on the cgnacontrols.com website. And there are links to contacting me. But absolutely, my job is to vet all new member and vendors would love to talk to you about your business as members, your product as vendors, and really appreciate, Eric, the opportunity to tell my story, but also promote the organization. I'm absolutely where I want to be with this organization, and I'm excited yeah. about the future. All right. So, Sarah, you're, you you need to up a date on your LinkedIn profile from lion tamer to cat herder. <laughs> so you're doing a great job at CGNA. They're lucky to have you. Our oh, industry has been lucky you. to have you. And, Sarah, we're so lucky. Thank you so much for all the wisdom you shared today. This Absolutely. is going to be really useful to a lot of people. That's my guest, Sarah Montilone, CGNA, the lion tamer. Cat Herger <laughs> of our generation. Okay, that's another week at Control Talk Now, the Smart Buildings videocast and podcast. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Until then, remember, be bold, stay in control, connect with somebody, be relevant. And as Hunter Thompson used to say, buy the ticket, take the ride.